Hello, this is a cross pathology specimen comprising the uterus with the uterine cervix and bilateral adnexal structures. The very obvious pathology is that both the adnexae are very enlarged and actually we are looking at the cut surfaces of bilateral ovarian tumours. These tumours are predominantly solid with some cystic areas and I'm going to turn this specimen around so here is the posterior serosal surface of the uterus and this is the left ovary which is very much enlarged and we can't really see very much of the left fallopian tube. And here is the right fallopian tube with the fimbrial end and this is the right ovary which is very enlarged and has a somewhat nodular appearance. Looking back at the cut surface, we can see, for example, in the right ovary that there is a nodular mass, which is whitish to yellowish. Some areas actually appear a little bit papillary in architecture, and uh, we can see that there are some cystic areas here, but most of the tumour is quite solid in appearance. And similarly, in the left ovary, we can also see the same appearance. With a gross appearance like this, with bilateral ovarian tumours, the main differential diagnosis would be primary tumours of the ovary versus metastasis to the ovary. So it is important to look at the past history or any known history of malignancy in this instance. It is also important to have a look at the endometrium itself. And in this plane of section, we can't really see the endometrium very well. Um, we can see a little bit of it here, but it appears to be fairly thin still. This is the myometrium, and I'm just moving down. You may be wondering uh, what this polypoid mass is here. This is the region of the endocervix. So here we're looking at an endocervical polyp, which is a benign polyp. It has got these uh, rather small cystic spaces. These are likely to be nabothian cysts, and this is benign. So what we see here are bilateral tumours involving the ovary and uh, these have a rather solid nodular appearance with focal cystic areas. After microscopic examination, the diagnosis here is endometrioid carcinoma involving bilateral ovaries. Endometrioid carcinoma of the ovary is part of the spectrum of ovarian epithelial tumours and uh, this is together with serous and mucinous tumours. Clinically, they may be associated with a background of endometriosis, so sometimes in the affected ovary, there may be some remnant endometriotic cysts that can be seen, and there may also be an association with endometrial hyperplasia or even carcinoma. So again, as mentioned, it is important to examine the endometrium as well. Clinically, these tumours may sometimes be bilateral. Uh, the prognosis is generally better than that of serous carcinoma, but it depends very much on the stage. And microscopically, often we see these crowded back-to-back -back glands and there's hardly any stroma in between. The cells are actually quite columnar and they closely resemble endometrium. And there may also be some squamous looking areas. Taking a closer look at the microscopy, and these pictures are taken from uh, the PathWeb online resource, uh, we can see that the cells are very columnar, they're quite tall, and they form these tubular structures which are very closely packed and there's hardly any stroma around it. And this is the classical appearance of endometrioid carcinoma. And this appearance is the same whether it is endometrioid carcinoma of the ovary or endometrioid carcinoma of the endometrium in the uterus. Hence, in summary, this is a specimen comprising a uterus with bilateral adnexal structures and there are tumours that are predominantly solid but with a minor cystic component involving both ovaries and the diagnosis is endometrioid carcinoma involving both ovaries. Thank you.